all right you guys so this is going to be a cool video not cool video a video that um i was asked to do and it's just talking about clinical what to expect clinical what to bring to clinical all that good stuff like that so let me just jump right into it and let's get started all right so first i'm going to tell you guys what is clinical because some people really don't know if you are in nursing school or maybe you are in nursing school and you haven't started clinical you're probably like what is clinical and trust me i've been there when i used to follow nurses before i got to nursing school and i was like what is clinical what is that what is that so i gonna just tell y'all clinical is when you as a nursing student will go to a hospital setting or it could be like a facility but more than likely it's going to be at a hospital on a med search floor more than likely and you will be under a nurse so usually you go okay this is what happened you'll go to clinical and your instructor whoever is over you at clinical will give you a patient and you will have to do an assessment on that patient and you'll just be with that patient in and out throughout the day and they're not going to sit in the patient's room and just watch them you're literally just going to be in and out the room checking on them if they need baths help them with baths if they need anything to get done that day like maybe they're getting an IV or maybe they need their trach suctioned or maybe they need help with feeding something like that you'll pretty much be under the nurse or your instructor helping that patient throughout the day when you get into third semester you will have two patients some places I've heard they have more than that but we have we got two patients and you'll just do the same thing you'll do an assessment on both of them if they need anything you'll do that if they have any medications that they are getting or if they're getting an IV again or any type of nursing type of care that you can give them your instructor usually will pull you and help you do those cares with those patients um, because it's technically like your patient you also would get like rapport and all that good stuff um, like a nurse would so you're pretty much like a nurse but a student nurse in a way at that facility for however many hours that you have clinical now clinical does vary um, we have clinicals for eight to nine hours I have heard of some students saying that their clinical is 12 hours um, I don't know if that's like I don't know how normal that is but I have heard some nurses tell me that when they were in nursing school they had 12 hour clinicals so I'm guessing some people do have 12 hour clinicals our clinicals were always eight to nine hours but that's just us um, you will have to wear your scrubs your student scrubs all your good stuff like that bring your stethoscope bring a um, pen light also bring a clipboard and that will help you to um, be there at the clinical site so what do you expect at clinicals um, pretty much you'll get there whenever now you can have clinicals whatever day the person is available so if you're with a clinical instructor and she's there on Sundays you'll be there on Sundays I praise God I've never had a Sunday or a weekend clinical but this this semester we did have people in our class who have Fridays and Saturday clinicals so just be prepared for that also um, you might have a evening I've seen people have evening clinicals meaning they there at like 1 to like 9 and then I had people have morning I've always had a morning clinical so we would get there so usually the norm for shift changes is either 6 to 6 30 or 7 to 7 30 it depends on hospital but that's normally the time frame that you'll see and you'll get there so if you have a morning clinical you'll get there at that 6 o'clock a.m and you'll usually you have to meet your instructor somewhere either on the floor or somewhere else in the hospital and you'll meet up and then you'll be on the floor and your instructor will give you the room that you're assigned to or rooms so say she's going to be like or he's going to be like you know hey today you're going to be taking care of room 223 and 224 and they'll give you the um they'll usually give you a report sheet which is pretty much just a piece of paper that breaks down the systems and the patient's basic information so you can write down anything from report. They also give you like a history on the patient, the meds on the patient, and any just information that you could use on the patient. So it'll be like a packet of paperwork. And they'll give you that and they'll say these are your rooms. And then what we do is we get to the floor, we put our stuff away, we take our stethoscope and anything that we may need like pens, our clipboard, and then we have to stand by the room and wait till report comes which could take a minute sometimes but you either your nurse will either give bedside reporting 
or sometimes you have to find the nurse and get report but it just depends but normally the nurses come around and they'll do report and you just kind of stand next to the nurse you introduce yourself and you say hey I'm such and such I'm gonna be with you today they'll be like okay and then they'll do report and you'll just write down everything that you need and then normally after that you'll go in with the patient with the nurse the nurse will say hey I'm nurse such and such this is the student with me we're gonna be in and out your room after that normally you can kind of vary how your day goes um some instructors are different some instructors are very like you need to do stuff every five seconds like you need to be busy all day some instructors are more laid back so they'll be like you know keep yourself busy but if something if it's nothing to do you know do paperwork or fill out your assessment forms or whatever the case may be but normally for me after i go into my patient's room first in the morning i kind of let them relax and then i'll kind of um you know go see if any other student needs help with anything and then usually after an hour if they're, my patients are awake I'll go back in the room and I'll do my physical assessment which is just me of course checking lung sounds stomach sounds eye ears nose, throat um, strength pulses any bruising scars wounds on them all that good stuff ask them if they're in any pain um, if they need anything and then after I do my assessments I just help with anything else that the nurses or techs may need. So doing vitals, blood sugars, baths, if, whatever that they need help with just to keep your day busy. Now, some I've heard some instructors say that they don't let their students do baths or tech work. Others say, you know, they let us do tech work because they say it helps us to stay busy. And also it is good to know, which I do agree with. I think every student should know how to do tech work because if you don't have a tech, who's going to be the tech? you are <laughs> so you need if you and if you feel like you're over or above doing tech work then you definitely don't need to be a nurse because you should never think you're too good to help someone bathe a patient or help a patient go to the bathroom because in reality back in the day that was all nurses job they didn't have techs you did the bath the sugars the vitals and you did the nursing work it was expected of you so you know don't ever get too high and mighty and think you can't do that because honey child you need to be right up in there helping your tech because if you have a good relationship with your tech life is good harmony is good and you need to just learn how to have respect for tech because i think sometimes in nursing school we kind of get big-headed towards the end especially like you like i'm a nurse i don't do that i don't baths what's a bath and that's just not the good mindset to have because again if your techs like you your night or day is going to be amazing if your techs do not like you or they feel like you do not do anything to help them out or they feel like you call them for stupid stuff like aka you're in the patient's room and the patient wants some water and you can get the water but you don't want to get the water so you call the tech who's down the hallway charting they're not going to like you and if they don't like you honey you're going to have to work 10 times harder because they're going to be like you're going to sink and swim and i do not care <laughs> so Learn now in nursing school to respect your techs, to respect who you work with, to help your techs because you will see that your shift goes so much better when everybody's in unity because at the end of the day, you're not more, no better than a tech and they're still helping you out and I have a lot of respect because I work as a tech at my other job and I have a lot of respect from, for techs from working as a tech. So that's just something to think about when you are in clinical. If your instructors like do baths, do vitals, do not think, uh, you're above that. Just go ahead and go all in for it and shoot, be the best bath giver you can give because honestly, having those skills will really help you in the long run. So, yeah. So pretty much that. That's really what takes up our day. And then you usually will go to lunch and, um you'll pretty much be done after that you come to lunch you just continue to check on your patient and you'll be done now just some tips while you're at clinical and to survive clinical uh, first tip is to make sure you eat breakfast our clinical instructor is really cool this semester like she will let us go eat like get breakfast real quick and eat um, and then before we start like doing other stuff throughout our day but if you do have an instructor who won't let you kind of leave off the floor to eat anything, definitely make sure you eat you a good breakfast or bring you snacks so you can eat throughout the day. Because when you are in the hospital, especially if you're someone who you never been in the hospital or worked in the hospital and clinical is your first experience, you will see that if you eat a bagel before, you might be like, all right, that bagel filled me up. I'm kind of full. Once you start walking up and down the hallways, 
doing baths or doing whatever you're doing, helping the patients, that calorie will burn right off of you. And before you know it, you're going to be starving and hungry. And there has been stories of people passing out at clinical people literally like passing out because they're so hungry and they're moving around they haven't eaten all day and all those calories are off plus they're burning more calories because they're walking around and they pass out so you don't want to do that person so um, definitely make sure you eat you a good breakfast because when you start walking around at clinicals you will see that those calories will come right off <laughs> um, a next tip is to bring any necessities that you need like lotion 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 bring lotion because your hands will be dry from going into patients room helping them so bring lotion if you like lip gloss lipstick bring all that stuff bring perfume i like to bring perfume and deodorant just in case i need to freshen up extra pads if you're a woman you know make sure you have all that in your bag because you never know and you always want to be prepared because you're at clinical all day and some hospitals have little pharmacies or stores in the hospital. So if you did start your period, it sounded like something was bubbling. I was like, what is that? That must be my candle. Okay. But yeah, so some hospitals have like little stores or stuff that if you ran out of anything or you needed a pad or you needed something, they, you can buy it. Other hospitals, like smaller hospitals, don't have all that. So it's just good to always have it in your bag. Um also make sure you keep enough pens I like to keep a colorful pen on me and a black pen just because black pens when you fill out your physical assessment form or maybe if you're in a patient's room the nurse is like you want to write this down for me or can I borrow a pen you have a black pen I also like the colorful pen when I'm doing report because I just like my reports to be colorful so that if I need to make any changes to it, I can use another color so I know the difference um, so that's that you also always make sure you bring your stethoscope I leave mine in my bag no, that's not the best thing to do to leave it in your bag because it can bend it up and mess up the tubing over time. But as y'all know, I'm extra bougie, so I was already going to buy a new one anyway when I graduate. <laughs> but um, it hasn't messed up for me, but I just leave it in my bag um, so I never forget it because I have had times where I forgot my stethoscope in the car and I couldn't go get it. So, and I had to use another classmate, so just try it. And some instructors are really cool. They might let you go get it, or they might say you can use someone else's. Other instructors are very strict, so they'll actually mark you off as like a um, not satisfactory. Because at the end of clinical, without getting to that in a second, your um, you have to fill out like an evaluation for that day, and you can actually get an in for not satisfactory or not sas whatever you know, like not good if you forget something or you're not prepared so just to be on the safe side always bring all your stuff because you don't want to ever get dinged for the day for not being prepared because you forgot something in your car so I just keep everything in my bag um, um, also always bring a jacket just in case you usually your school scrubs have a jacket that you can buy so I would just bring the jacket just to be on the safe side in case it is cold some floors are different some floors are really cold some floors are really hot so it's just safer to bring a jacket just to be on the safe side um, as far as interacting with nurses you definitely want to be respectful try to be overly nice because you don't ever want a nurse to think that you're trying to be funny or rude or petty or anything you just don't want them to think nothing so i try to always just put on my like hi jasmine you know nice voice and so they know that i'm trying to be as nice as i can listen to them if they ask you to do something you know try to be all in for it of course anytime a nurse asks you to do something ask your instructor first because you don't want to do something that's out of your scope um, but anytime a nurse is like, do you want to do an IV? you want to get meds? Make sure you ask your instructor. Um, but, you know, if a nurse is asking you to do stuff, just try to go all in with the nurse. Help the nurse as much as possible. Um, try to just be nice to the nurse. Does that mean all nurses are going to like you? No. There's going to be times at clinical where you feel like everyone hates you. But you just have to just put on a smile and just kind of get through the day and just know that at the end, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um... As far as, yeah, so you just, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the big thing. Um, it's just being as respectful as you can. Be professional. Um, on the floor, don't cuss. <laughs> Please don't cuss because um, you can get in really big trouble for that. And there are students who got in trouble for language and stuff like that. Um, or just being rude to nurses and staff. So, the, again, that's the biggest thing is to be respectful. Be nice. Smile. Be nice to patients. 
um, if there is an issue do speak up at clinical if you have a nurse or a patient that's just being crazy rude to you tell your instructor because it can be handled um, what's some other stuff some tips to make it through try to again stay busy because if you have an instructor who's very like stay busy you don't want to get in trouble in an, like unintentionally because you aren't busy so if you're good with something help your classmates that's a big thing because um you want to make sure that you're a team player with everything that you do so if you are done with your stuff or say you win your patient's room they don't need nothing you know nobody wants a bath nobody needs anything go ask your classmates you know do you need help you know are you having to do a bath do you need help with anything i'll help you because you want to be a team player you want everyone to know that you don't mind helping them if they need help so yeah so that's pretty much it i think a lot of people are scared about clinicals because they're like what is it and how's it gonna be it's really not that bad um to me it's really not that bad you know it does go by pretty fast if you stay busy um so yeah, it's not really that bad. You will get a lot of experience. Does that mean always in clinicals you're going to be popping in IVs and putting in nasal tubes and stuff? I mean, NG tubes? No. There are going to be times at clinical where hey, nobody needs an IV, nobody needs nothing. You're just doing baths and or kind of with your instructor. But there will be more opportunities than you probably have gotten, especially if you never worked in a hospital. So take advantage of those opportunities if you do um have opportunities let them come you know the, if you have opportunities that come up definitely take advantage of those um also when you give meds make sure that you always bring a drug book this is mine it's an old one this is the davis drug guide for nurses i brought one for nurses because it usually usually it kind of breaks up down in a nurse's world so this is an old book some people like to buy brand new spanking drug books i don't really care because most of the time in the hospital settings they use older drugs that have been around forever it's rarely that you see new new drugs that aren't even in a drug book being used but um this is just one i brought but i like davis drug guides but they have newer versions this is an old version this is like a couple i think it's like 2009 or something like that but it was cheap so I bought it. it was like $11 if you buy the new ones they're like 40 bucks so you want to be like me be cheap <laughs> always bring your drug book because um if you give drugs your instructor's going to say look up the drugs and if you don't bring your book then you're going to have to sit there on your phone or try to find other ways to look it up so always bring your drug book just to be on the safe side because you never know again sometimes you'll give drugs sometimes you won't there are some instructors that make you give drugs every week some instructors will let you do it sometimes but always bring your drug but just to be on the safe side because it's good to look up medications if you don't know them because there will be times where you come across medications and you're like what is this so it's good to look them up um also sometimes again in nursing school you have a little downtime at clinical so if you do it's always good to maybe bring your paperwork because for our clinicals we have to do what's called a pathoform and we have to do a um care plan and we have to do the weekly eval and pretty much a now your first semester you only have to do a care plan and a physical assessment when you get into second semester and third semester that's when you'll do the physical assessment which is just a head to toe um which you'll learn in your first semester is pretty much saying you know were the eyes equal was the face symmetrical was the lung the lungs clear were the stomach um hypoactive hyper if they had any bruises stuff like that is what a physical assessment form will look like um then a care plan is when you pretty much find an issue with a patient if you guys want me to help you do care plans just ask me because i don't really got a question about care plan but if you don't really if you're not good at care plans let me know but a care plan is pretty much where you have a piece of paper that your school will usually provide a template and it will just be the issue a nurse's issue that's wrong with the patient and you usually have to buy a book as regards to nursing diagnosis for patients i think this is my book no it's not a book but <laughs> i can't find my book and i don't feel like looking and getting up for it either but usually in nursing school when you get your books they'll tell you to buy a nursing diagnosis book whichever one that they require 
we just had like a Nanda nurses diet. It literally says like nursing diagnosis book that we our school told us to get. And in that book, it has all kinds of nursing diagnosis for different issues. Um, and whatever issue your patient either has going on or you think is an issue, you will write a care plan out for that. And usually you can either do a risk for or you will do an actual nursing diagnosis. Some instructors do not like risk for because they feel like if they're in the hospital, there's a definite issue. Other instructors don't really care. So it really just depends. But usually your instructor will tell you at the jump of clinical if they do mind that or they don't mind that. So pretty much you'll do a nursing diagnosis and you'll just write out. Usually it just has like any symptoms that you've seen, what you would do assessment wise, like what you would check, what you would do, which would be therapeutic and what teaching you will give. And then on the, the care plan, I'll have like a long term goal and a short term goal of what as a nurse you feel like you can accomplish on that shift and what you feel like you can accomplish with this patient long term. Then when you get again, when you get into second and third semester, you'll do a patho form. Um, now, not every school is probably doing that. I know our school does. So I'm just going to tell you guys what our school does just in case you hear patho form, you know what it is. It's pretty much just a form where it has whatever um, medical diagnosis the patient came with. So for example, your nursing diagnosis could be, um, it could be risk for infection. That's what you think. The patient may be, say the patient came in um, and they had to get a amputation. So you would do, you know, risk for infection, but your medical diagnosis actually what medically was diagnosed with them. So maybe they are medically diagnosed with diabetes. So you would write in the patho form, it literally will have you explain the patho of diabetes, what labs you would look for, what medications you would give, what, um, yeah, what therapeutic regimen you would do for this patient who has diabetes. Again, not every school does that. I think our school has recently done pathoforms. I don't think they've always done them. But again, I just want you guys to know just in case you hear something about pathoforms so you know. And then lastly, you, usually I'm pretty sure most nursing schools have an evaluation for the week. And that's pretty much where you have to write out what you did, like say any skills that you did for the day. And we also have this paper that we have, which is just pretty much goes with the nursing association of what we're supposed to be doing at clinicals. So you have to write out whatever kind of task and skills you've done for that day. And then you just sign off and your instructor has to go through and say, were you satisfactory for that day or were you not? And that's how you do it. Um, I believe in nursing clinicals, if you get two ends, aka not satisfactory, I believe you fail clinicals. And you can fail clinicals. Um, that's another thing, last thing. That's why it's good to be in your best behavior. Wear your uniform like you're supposed to wear it. Be respectful. Just do what you're trying to do. Even if you feel like you, you know, you're getting you're getting a hard time, try to just keep on the smile and uh, keep your poker face on because you can fail clinical. If your instructor feels like you're not doing what you're supposed to do, or if she they feel like you gotten complaints, or they feel like you're not doing paperwork or safe then you can fail clinical and this is why it's important as well to when you're in clinical if anything's abnormal if you take vitals on a patient and their respiration is like 60 or their heart rate's like 30 you want to be sure that you tell the nurse and you tell your instructor because you can get in trouble for that if you know something's wrong and you don't say anything so it's good to do what you're supposed to do which again your instructors will let you know you know, hey, this is what you should do at clinical. This is what I expect of you. But it's just safe to always be on your P's and Q's because you came so far and you do not want to fail nursing school, not because you failed the test or anything like that, but because of clinical. So that is really the big nitty gritty of the makeup pretty much of clinical. So um, I hope this video helped you guys and do not be scared of clinical. Do not worry. You will get through it. Clinical is supposed to be the best part of nursing school because you're actually in the field. So take that time, enjoy clinicals, learn as much as you can, just be a sponge and soak it all in. And yes, and before you know it, honey, you'll be walking down that stage and you'll be like, deuces. So keep it going. And yes, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys, again, wanted me to do any other videos in regards to clinical paperwork, just let me know. Um, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I love you guys. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. Keep up with me. Keep up with my journey. And we will be done with nursing school before you know it, y'all. So, thank you guys. Bye.